Today on Mr. Thessalonian, we've got the newest version of the Creality K1 Max here. Brand new in the box. We're going to go ahead and pull it out for you today, set it up, and do our first prints just to see how well it works. Later on, we're going to do a versus video where we're going to put the K1 Max up against the Quiddy Plus 4. They both have a very similar build volume, a lot of the same characteristics in the print temperatures. So we'll be able to see which one of the two machines is really a better bang for the buck. Let's go ahead and get this unboxing started. So here we go, we've got a razor in our hand. Let's go ahead and get down here on the side and we'll cut the tape. All right, and one down the center. So there we go. I'll change the camera view for you guys here in just a moment so you can see a little bit better what we've got going on in here. All right, to so start out with here, we've got the Creality K1 Max Quick Installation Guide. We're gonna go ahead and set that down to the side. We're gonna get into that in just a moment. Uh, the next part here I see is that we've got a foam piece right here on the top. Doesn't look like there's anything in that, so we can throw that to the side. We've got some corner protectors we're going to want to pull out of there. Let's get those out of our way. And let's see here. Alright, so the next piece here, it looks like we've got the glass lid of the machine right here in this top little foam section here. You can see that. Let me go ahead and back up the camera a little bit so you can see this a lot better. All right, so let's go ahead and lift this up for you guys now that you can see what we've got going on here. You can see here in the top section of the foam, you've got the glass top. Let's go ahead and remove that from that and set that to the side. All right, let's put that down over here. Anything else in that foam chunk doesn't look like it, so we can throw that down to the side. The next part of this looks like we're going to be able to pull the machine itself up out of the box, and we'll get that up on a table so you can get a better look at what we've got going on here. Let's see if I can get that out of there. Alright, take that box out forward, set down the machine, give me just a second to set this up on a table and we'll finish the video. Okay, so the next step of this, looks like up here in the top of the machine we've got some foam cutouts. One of the little recesses in there has our power cord in it right there, we'll set that to the side. Alright, the other recess up here looks like we've got the screen for the Creality K1 Max right there. We're going to go ahead and set that to the side for a moment. Let's go ahead and carefully pull out these foam sections out of the top here. All right, so it looks like you want to pull out the back one first. That's this guy right here. It doesn't look like there's anything in that. And then you should be able to move the tool head back just a little bit. And then we can pull out this other piece of foam right there. We can throw that to the side. There's a nice big box right here in the inside of the machine. You can see that right there. We're going to set that to the side. It feels like it's got a lot of the components in it. We'll take a look in just a moment what we've got inside of there. All right, it looks like we're ready to start removing the tape off the front door here. So let's go ahead and start pulling some of this tape off. All right. Got one more piece down here. Now I hold the door when you do this, just because it's got that protective layer on it, and you don't want to be swinging open the door when you're pulling off the tape. We'll go over here to the other side. All right, we got a little protective layer right there on the side piece. Yeah, let's get the little strings off of there from the tape. All right, guys, so there we go. We've got the protective layer off of the front of the door. Let's go ahead and take a look inside here. We'll open up the door. You can see here there's a chunk of foam right here at the very beginning that was holding the box itself that we just pulled out of there. Let's go ahead and turn that sideways and lift it out to the top. Doesn't look like there's anything else in that, so we'll throw that to the side. We'll go ahead and just cut the top of that open. Let's take a quick look inside of there. First of all, I see the installation guide. They give you a bunch of stickers here in the back. And there is an after-sales service card. So you're definitely going to want to fill out that after-sales service card because you definitely want a warranty. And let's look into the installation guide real quick and let's see what we've got going on here. Uh, let's see. Ba -da 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 -da. All right, so we just went through the unpacking process, getting all those pieces out of there. Um, install the product. So the first part of this, it looks like we're going to install the screen first. So let's go ahead and grab the screen. We've got our Creality K1 Max screen right here and the Mylar protective cover. You see that? We've got to throw the cover away. Right down here at the bottom, you can see there's a piece of tape holding down a wire lead coming out of the bottom of the machine, and that's where you're going to want to hook up your screen to. 
Here in the back of the screen, you can see the hookup spot right there. So let's go ahead and make sure the screen's upright. We'll take that wire lead, and we're gonna go ahead and stick that into the back of the screen here. All right, that's in there. On the back of the screen itself, it's got two little plastic clips sticking out, and there are two holes that match that on the back side here on the machine itself. Go ahead and stick those little clips down inside of those holes, and I'm pretty sure you just push down with that. It should both lock right into place, and there we go. We now have our screen on the K1 Max and ready to go. We'll just make sure we've got it down far enough by shutting the door. Looks like it's just right. All right, so one of the next things that we're going to need to do here is we're going to need to remove the hold-down screws that are holding the bed down into place here for shipping. We're going to grab one of the Allen wrenches that were provided inside of that toolbox. We're going to remove those screws. It shows you here how to do that. In fact, if you turn the machine on, it will actually go through the process with you on the screen here and let you know how to get to those screws and where they are. So let's go ahead and get those tools out. We'll open up that box and see what we've got going on in there. All right, guys, so I've got that box we pulled out of the inside. We're going to go ahead and remove the outside cover to it. Looks like it's got another piece of foam in there. We've got a top box right there. We'll set that up on top. Look at this. They gave us an entire full spool of Creality's Hyper Series white PLA. Now that's pretty uncommon to get an entire full spool with your machine. I really like that. Thank you, Creality. Go ahead and set that down to the side for now. We'll use that here in a moment for our first test prints. All right, so what do we got in here? This looks like a new hot end, so it's going to give us a different hot end in here or a new one to replace the one we've got. And it looks like it's copper with probably a stainless steel uh, tip on there. Very nice hot end. Here in this bag, it looks like we've got the pieces for our door handle. We're going to set those down because we need to install those. We've got the back spool holder right there and what appears to be we can get rid of that. Four little feet that we can put on the bottom. They're nice uh, vibration dampening feet. We can go ahead and stick those on the bottom once we get this thing set up. We'll set those off to the side. We're gonna go ahead and install the spool holder on the back. There's a little recess back here on the back. It's pretty easy to see right down towards the bottom. You go ahead and just line this up and twist it into place and you'll have your spool holder in there. There we go, it's just that quick. And we're gonna set the feet down to the side for a moment. We'll get underneath the machine a little bit later on. All right, so let's grab this little box up top here. This will have the rest of the pieces that we're looking for. All right, we got a tool bag full of our Allen wrenches and the tools we're gonna need. We're gonna set that right there because we're gonna need those here in a moment. Gave us an SD card right here. We're gonna set that down. We'll need that for our first print. We've got a really nice set of uh, clippers here. This looks a lot better than the normal ones. Set those down. Gave us a nice metal scraper so that way we can scrape our bed clean. Very nice, we'll set that down to the side. Looks like they gave us a nozzle cleaning tool right here. Pretty nice to have, we'll set that back in there. We've got some grease and we've got probably another kind of grease right here. Some metal grease and a thermal grease. So one of them is actually gonna be applied to the hot end. I'm gonna go ahead and put that right back down. We've even got a glue stick they provided for us. And I'll tell you what, I really like Creality's glue sticks. The glue itself seems to work great for all different kinds of materials. So we're definitely gonna be using that. All right, guys, so there we go. We'll put the grease and everything back in there for right now. That looks like all the stuff we're gonna need to pull out of that box, and we'll throw that down right here to the side. All right, so the next step of this, let's go ahead and grab the little package with the doorknob in it. We'll get that out, and we'll install our doorknob onto the glass door here, and we'll get that all done. You've got uh, two screws, two little plastic tabs, and a metal plate that are inside of this bag. You've got your little front plastic doorknob. Let's go ahead and open up the little bag and dump out all the parts here. Now remember those two little plastic tabs, they actually go in from the back and they're going to go into the holes in the glass themselves. You're going to put the screws through those tabs. It kind of acts as a protector for the glass so you don't pinch metal directly against the glass. We're going to need one of the Allen wrenches here out of our tool bag to install this. Let's go ahead and grab the right Allen wrench. Which one does it look like? It's probably one of these little small ones. Let's see if we got the right one here. All right, that looks good. The first step of this is we're going to grab the little metal piece that they give you in there. Looks just like that. You're then going to align that. Let's make sure we've got to go in the right direction. I believe it goes with the T side out towards the outside edge of the door. You're going to take the two little plastic tabs they provide you. You're going to stick them in through that metal piece real quick. Just like this. And then we're going to stick those up into the holes in the door. Keep your thumb on the back side of them. Align that with the little holes in the glass of the door. 
and push those in through the holes there. And it should kind of hold itself into place. Next, we're going to take the two screws, stick those in through the plastic tab holes, line up the plastic piece here for the door, and screw the two together. Pretty simple. Now guys, you definitely don't want to over tighten these, it's just lightly snugged up and that's all you're going to need on those. There we go. Alright, we now have our door handle on the K1 Max and ready to go. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step of this, which is going to be to remove the screws on the build plate here that are actually holding down the build plate. They've got some yellow arrows in here, so there's three screws that we need to remove. We're going to go ahead and grab the Allen wrench that's going to work for those. Alright, we've got that Allen wrench. I'm going to reach down inside here. There's one screw right here on this side. You can see it's a silver screw versus the others that are dark black. Let's go ahead and just remove that screw. Alright, we've got one out. Let's move over to the other side here. We'll move the little yellow arrow. Alright, we've got number two out. Back here in the very back, you can see another yellow arrow. And that's going to be the third screw we're going to have to remove to release the build plate. Alright, so we've got our third screw out. Make sure you remove those little yellow arrows that were with it. Now we're ready to go for our next step. Let's take a look at the directions and see what it says. Alright guys, so it took me a while looking around the machine just to make sure. Um, every other Creality I've ever owned has a voltage selection switch. On the K1 Max so far, I don't think there is one. I don't see it in the directions. And I don't see one of the voltage selection switches on the machine itself, so I believe this is already pre-set up for the 120 volt current. Let's go ahead and get an extension cord and we'll plug this in and get it started. Let's go ahead and start removing some of the protective covers here. We're going to remove the one that's on the screen. Looks like there's another one on the build plate here. Let's go ahead and remove that. That looks good. I do notice there's a piece of foam back here in the back that's sticking out from underneath the build plate, so I'm assuming once we lift up the build plate, we're going to be able to get underneath there and remove that. Alright, so we just turned on the power. We'll let it go through its fire up, and we'll move on through the directions it gives us on the screen here. We should be pretty much ready to start loading filament and get the machine up and running. Alright, so we're done with the fire up here. We're ready to start setting up the machine. First of all, it's going to ask you for the language. Let's go ahead and go English. Remove the screws A, B, and C according to the locations on the yellow arrows. We've already done that. Welcome to Creality 3D Printing. Uh, please keep the blue cube in the diagram clear of debris and click OK. So we've got it free of debris and we're going to go ahead and click OK. Uh, we've got a privacy policy. We'll go ahead and go next. It's asking us to set up our network. We're not going to do that right now. So up here at the top, we're going to go ahead and hit skip. Uh, we got a time zone setting, and we are at uh, Central Standard Time. Next. Now this is a Creality Cloud Binding System, so we're going to go ahead and just go next on that. Alright, so the next part of this, it says we've got a self-check. It just says, uh, please place the printing platform on there, and then the self-check process is expected to last around 11 minutes. So let's go ahead and hit that, and we'll let that go. Once it's done with the self-check, I'll turn back on the camera, we're going to finish up the setup. Alright, to start out with here, I know I already showed you guys installing the spool holder, but it goes right here inside of this hole down towards the bottom. You're going to stick it inside of there and just rotate it until it stops, and now you've got your spool holder ready to go. There is a sticker back here that says, please tear off the sticker before use. We're going to go ahead and do that. And that's where the filter is on the back of the machine. So we're going to go ahead and remove that sticker. There we go, we're ready to go. There's some directions here to show you which way you're going to want to put the spool on there. It is a little bit different than what you would typically think it would go, so you're definitely going to want to look at those directions. So here we go, we've got our brand new spool of white PLA. We've got the spool unrolling from this side, not the other. We're going to grab our new clippers that they provided with it. Let's go ahead and cut the end off here. Pull that out of there. Alright, so to start out with here, we're going to cut a 45 degree angle in the white PLA, just like that. Let's go ahead and feed that into the PTFE tube. And just go ahead and push that all the way up in there until you feel it stop in the printhead.
All right, it looks like we've got it all the way up in there. Let's go back around to the front. We'll get going on our first print. All right, guys, we're starting to extrude some filament there. We're ready to go. Some of the other things that I've noticed here on the Creality K1 Max, which will add to the machine's capabilities, is first of all, we have a LiDAR system here. It's an AI LiDAR which will kind of monitor the prints. Hopefully it'll take care of any of those failed prints or the first layer of your print to make sure it doesn't fail. We've got a camera up here in the corner so we can watch those prints as they print. You can probably take a time lapse of that. I think the camera also helps monitor the print a little bit with some AI technology. All right, so we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and pull out the material that it extruded. We're gonna grab the SD card they provided with the machine. Let's go ahead and stick that in there. All right, give the machine just a moment. So uh, reading the flash drive, let's go down to the files here and see what it gave us on there. It uh, looks like it gave us the capability to, uh, we can actually print out a scraper if we need one. Uh, side spool support, it's got a little table support for spools. We've got the Creality Hyper PLA uh, test cube and we've got a Benchy. Let's go ahead and hit the Benchy and let's go print. So we're ready to go here, we're going to let the Benchy print and see just how long it takes. Go ahead and take, a, just for example here, the Quiddy Plus 4 3D Benchy. Get that in the camera for you. You can see the quality differences between the two prints. The blobules up there on the smokestack. You can see how much nicer the smokestack looks with the Creality K1 Max. Both of them have very similar lines going down the side of it. Looks like the K1 Max has a little bit less lining going down the sides. You can definitely see those lines here on the Quiddy Plus 4's version. Go ahead and set that down just for a second. We're going to take a look at how much time that took. According to the computer down here, it took exactly 16 minutes to print that Benchy, whereas the Quiddy Plus 4 took about 17 minutes and something seconds. So actually it's a little bit faster than the Quiddy Plus 4 and it's definitely producing a higher quality print than that printer. We're going to test out a few other things and at the end of this I'll show you guys all those prints and how well they turned out. Printed out a few different things here. We printed out the CR cube. I just want to bring that up to the camera for you so you can see what we've got going on here. It turned out really nice. Looks like all the edges look good. We look at the X here. The X looks really nice right there. We look over at the Y. The Y looks pretty nice there. I don't see any flaws with that at all. Look up here at the top at the CR. It looks good as well. The corner looks nice. Basically everything on this looks nice. Even the bottom looks really nice. I don't see really any elephant's foot off the edges. Nothing about the cube makes me think that there's anything wrong with the settings on that. Alright, so let's go ahead and set these down and we'll put that off of the build plate. On the build plate here you see one of my favorite lures. This is the Frog Flopper. And I print this all the time on different printers when somebody I knew introduced me to it. Let's go ahead and break that off of there and take a look at it. We've got the tail and we've got the main body. Give me just a second here, we'll stick that back in there. Got some supports here on the tail we got to break off real quick. All right, looks like we got that all off of there. So here's the tail for the frog flopper. Turned out looking pretty good. We've got just a little bit of side fluff right there that's easily removed with just a heat gun or a lighter. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the main body. All right, so there's the main body of the frog flopper. Turned out really nice. I don't see any flaws in that anywhere. Go ahead and turn that all over. The only thing we had, we had a bit of a brim around the bottom of it down here, so you'll see a little bit of an edge from the brim. You can clean that up once you've got it off the printer. The eyes on there look really nice. If we get up close, you can see how nice the eyes turned out. This will be a great lure. So there you go, guys. There was an unbox, a setup, and our first prints with the Creality K1 Max. Stay tuned. We're going to go ahead and put the K1 Max up against the Quiddy Plus 4. We're going to do a print off with them and see which one of them prints faster and see which one of them prints with better quality. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed. This was Mr. Teslonian.